What's this knob do? All right, uh, well, hello everybody. Uh, it's been a while since I've actually done any kind of a video uh, that I've actually been in anyways. Um, kind of revamped the uh, OS x86 project that I did videos on years ago. Um, things have obviously progressed since then. Uh, Lion is now in the official stages, uh, but I've gone back to Leopard and kind of redid that. I'm running on completely different hardware because I did just get a bunch of uh, older computers there that are actually pretty much perfect for the setup here. Most of it works out of box. Um, it's a Hewlett Packard DC7600 Ultra Slim PC. Um, it's all Intel based except for the um, the actual NIC or LAN card is a Broadcom. 5772 I think if I remember right but either way it's Broadcom so it's kind of a pain in the butt regardless but it does work I have it all functioning hundred percent there um, and so I'm just gonna kind of show you how I did it here so let's see here alright so that there is the actual HP and as you can see uh, right now it is on, but uh, yeah, that's the uh, slimline that I'm using for the actual uh, Leopard installation. I installed using well multiple different installations, but in the end, the one that's worked for me pretty much completely is iDeneb, and it's version well I've, I installed with version 1.5, but I downloaded 1.6. 1.5 is Leopard but it has 10.7 uh, and 1.6 is 10.8 however I updated manually or not well within the operating system that is and it crashed my kernel but I just reinstalled the kernel and the uh, bootloader from the installation CD for 1.7 or 10.7 excuse me and that's what did it there Alright, so as you can see here, uh, the system is working. I'm currently on Firefox. Let's see, just so you can see it a little bit better. There we go. And yeah, it's plugged into my TV right now, and I've got the sound actually running through my. Uh, my amplifier, so I do have working sound. Make sure that's turned up. Okay, and it is. Uh, let's see. Yeah, anyways. So I am running 10.8. And it is a 3 gigahertz Intel Core processor. It's a single core. Uh, right now, this computer has 1.5 gigahertz of DDR2 RAM, as you can see. Uh, it's only got three slots on board. Otherwise, I'd be running four, but that's okay because uh, three is plenty. I mean, this system runs extremely fast. Actually, I'm very surprised with what it's got going on. So it's uh, pretty nifty there. But uh, basically, I'm going to do a dry run with you on how I got it to install, so that way you can actually see it. Uh, I'm not actually going to install the system since it is obviously working, but I'll give you a quick run through. And uh, I'll later be listing the different files I used. Um, so, uh, to get everything working, it took about a week to get everything down and working just right. Because I, uh, when you install it initially, you are going to have issues uh, with the display adapter not going past a standard resolution and your NIC is not going to work but past that everything should work out of the box. The sound will work, uh, the video will display and everything will start up and function it just needs those additional texts installed and a specific modified driver for the Broadcom that is in these units. 
So as you can see, I've inserted the CD. It's uh, appeared there on the screen now. So we're just going to reboot. Now my computer. Not oh, me. No. Are you sure you want? Um, not sure if it's going to reboot or not. Mine has an issue where it'll reboot, um, but then the bootloader doesn't load, which you'll see in a moment if it does or doesn't. And I just get a blinking cursor up in the left hand corner of the screen. Oh, but it looks like it's actually going to work today. Cool. So, we're going to boot off the disk. This process does take a little bit, and it's, it's a non verbose mode in this disk, uh, like most of them are nowadays. So, we just get the Apple logo till it boots. Uh, so, I'll be back when it finishes. Alright, so as you can see, uh, we're finally getting to the actual booting sequence here, or not booting sequence, but the actual installation screen. Naturally runs a little bit slower because it is running off of the CD-ROM. And I'm not sure how this one's packed, but my CD-ROM always has to make a lot of movement when, or I should say DVD-ROM always has to make a lot of movement when reading it. So, I don't know if it's just uh, got sporadic files or what, but that's okay, because everything works just fine. So obviously you want to choose English unless you want another language for your installation here. Alright, so at this point, uh, I just always get to the next screen, going through everything. This is going to have all the custom information about what's all been done in here. I think it's even got some of the information on the specific texts and everything. So if you want to read through this, fantastic. I don't really need to because I've installed this enough times throughout the week. I've pretty much got it all memorized. So what you'd normally do is you want to make sure that your drive is ready to go. So you go to Utilities, and then go down to Disk Utility. You should see your drive appear in here. And it's going to load the actual disk utility here and then uh, I've got my USB drive installed so it's reading that but right now you're going to want to choose your hard drive you may have more than one listed in here so if you know which one's yours fantastic in this case I've only got the one hard drive a Samsung 80 gig you're going to choose the partition you want in this case there's only one partition on mine and you're going to go to erase you're going to choose the volume format is going to be Mac OS extended journaled that's kind of an important part and then name it whatever I just named mine leopard since that's what's going on it and then you'll choose erase and it'll ask you are you sure and then you'll choose erase in my case I'm not going to because I've already got what I want on there but it takes a few moments you'll know it's done because down here capacity and availability should be about the same number it might be like off by point one uh, that's just for the system info and everything on the hard drive there that automatically gets put on there when you're done close it it's going to take us back to select a destination. You'll choose your hard drive you want in your partition, and you'll hit continue. Customizing, this is where it all comes together. Uh, for language transitions, I chose none of these because I don't want any of that extra stuff on my installation. It just makes it slower, takes up more hard drive room, plus I'm not going to use it. So I select all those. The IDNF Essential System, that's basically Leopard, so you're going to leave that checked. Now, the patches is where uh, we go here. For the bootloader, I chose Chameleon V2 because it does allow you to use DSDT patches if you want to. Um, it's just where you're basically patching the actual bootloader itself to do specific things like if you are having other graphics issues, stuff like that. I haven't done any DSDT. I didn't need to with this setup. I almost had to, but in the way, this time I didn't have to. So, Chameleon V2. Oops. And then we don't need to worry about Leopard AMD because this is an Intel processor, but if you have an AMD processor, this is why you'll be doing it. Then under fixes, um, you, I've been told to do the seatbelt fix. Honestly, I didn't do it. I did it manually inside the operating system because then I know it's the right one. Because your seatbelt version needs to match your kernel version. So we'll be getting to that in just a moment here. So fix, I left everything in there unchecked. Kernel, I chose the 970QOOPZ. It's based off of Voodoo. Um, it's just modified even off of that for the 9.7. Uh, and then there is a 9.8 model out there, I believe, now, but uh, that's alright because I'm not using that one. It all works fine. Then drivers, the audio I chose is the Voodoo HDA. 
and that uh, allows me to play sound. Uh, the Azalea Auto will work also. Mine didn't recognize my microphone port when I used that, but the, H the Voodoo HDA does actually recognize the microphone port. I haven't tested it, so I don't know if it works or not. And then for the chipset, I chose the ICHX Fixed for the Intel chipset that's on this board. Network I left undone and video I left undone because those are two kecks I'm installing manually once everything's installed. So when you're done, hit done, boom, hit install. Once again, I'm not going to do that because I've already got what I want on my hard drive here. So once the installation screen loads, it's going to put a little drop down here at the top of the screen, uh, right up about here, and it's going to say checking installation disk. Just click on skip because it takes forever and it really doesn't need to do it. I don't know why it does. Then the installation will start. It may appear to have stalled at a couple of points, like most specifically at the beginning. It doesn't really seem to do much. I haven't quite figured that one out, but it does eventually start installing. My guess is it's probably 25 to 30 minutes install. I want to say never timed it. I'm usually busy doing something else at that moment. So that's how you do that. So you choose install, install finishes, it reboots. At that point, you want to make sure to eject the DVD when it's rebooting there because the chameleon loader, at least on my computer, doesn't like it when the disk is in there. So I'm just going to go ahead and tell it to restart. Eject my disk. There we go. And the chameleon loader loads. And then this is where you'd enter any of your startup keys if you want to. I don't need to in mine and Leopard begins to boot. It actually boots pretty quick here, uh, which is nice, so... be a few moments while we wait. There we go. And now I'm running at full 1080p, well, I don't think it's 1080p, it's probably 1080i because I'm running through a VGA cable to my television, but it's still the uh, 1920 by 1080 so... Uh, we're good there. And so yeah, pretty much everything's loaded already. I use a magic jack. It doesn't appear that that's loaded at startup, but that's okay. Uh, just manually load it here, get it out of the way. I just want to make sure it works. And yes, the magic jack does work on here. Um, there we go. I, I keep it off in the corner over here because it pops up every time you pick up the phone or receive a phone call, kind of annoying. So I just keep it down there so if it does pop up, it's out of the way. Um, and it does work. I've heard uh, people having issues on uh, OS X, even on a real Mac. Well, seems to work okay with mine. Uh, so we're cool there. And so yeah, everything's booted up here. Now initially you're not going to have this screen resolution. You're going to be uh, running at a lower resolution, uh, 1026 by 78, that sounds right. Uh, 1024, excuse me, 768, that's the one. That's going to be the only option in here. Millions is going to be the only option, etc, etc. Uh, that's what we're going to fix uh, next, basically. You're going to need two things. You're going to need OSX86 tools. I got mine from Google Code, but I'll probably be posting a link for a Mediafire download. Uh, so, uh, oh, you run OSX86 tools. And then you're going to do Enable Disable Quartz GL, because by stock default, it's disabled. You're going to click on that, you're going to click on Enable Quartz GL. Um, and then it's going to tell you you need to reboot your computer. At that point, we're not going to reboot it yet, actually. Close back out of this, and then this is where we're going to install the actual text for the uh, graphics. Now, the one that worked for me is this package right here. It's uh, JAS 10.4.8, actually. It's for the GMA 950. That's the Intel chipset that's in here. It has up to 64 megabytes that Apple will recognize of shared video memory. You're going to install that package. Let me just go through the screens. I'm, on, I'm not going to install it because I've already done it, but basically just go through here, choose Leopard if it gives you a choice, and click install. Then at that point, once that's done, you're going to reboot it uh, You know, with the Apple there. I'm probably going to give you a message telling it needs to update its, uh, its boot cache. Just click OK, let it do its thing, it'll eventually reboot. Now once it reboots, you'll come back up. And it should have automatically adjusted your screen resolution, and then you should be able to go to your system preferences, and go to your displays and then you should have all these different resolutions to choose from depending on what your monitor supports but it should already be at the highest one and does even recognize mine as an LG TV which is pretty nice 
So we've got the video working now for the. Uh, oh, and like I said, then the sound and everything does work. Um, show you here right quick. Uh, if I can find the audio, there you are. I haven't run uh, this yet. There we go. So iTunes obviously works. Um, I remember that used to be maybe a bit of an option or a problem. See, it works just fine. Play, this is just an MP3, it's not an M4A, but I've heard of other problems where iTunes didn't work. So we're good there. And then, uh, so if sound works, uh, obviously read CDs just fine. Uh, everything's very quick. So now we're going to do the actual um, Ethernet driver. Now, what I've got is the Apple BCM. Uh, 5751 Ethernet. Uh, it, this is actually a modified KEXT, however, for the uh, device ID, the vendor ID that this chipset specifically has for the Broadcom driver. Uh, let's see, because if you go, it should show it in about this Mac for me, but it won't for you, but or actually, the best way for you to find out is actually with OS X86 tools again. Very marvelous program because um, it installs Kexts, it does the course GL, all that other fun stuff. Uh, but you'll, you'll do view PCI vendor device vendor ID. Now it's going to uh, tell you it needs to install the first time, so you'll install, you'll reboot, and then you'll rerun the program again. Choose run LSPCI, you have to enter in your password if you put one in. And then, bam, it tells you everything about what's in your computer hardware-wise. It sees my memory controller, my VGA, which is the, uh, well, it calls it an 80, yeah, see here, there we go. It's calling it an 82945G, GZ, which it's not, it's a 950. Well, I shouldn't say it's not, that's probably their chipset name for it, but the actual name and as it's recognized is a 950. And then the integrated graphics controller, it's uh, 8086-2772. That's all the uh, vendor and revision ID and all that fun stuff you need. And in this case, we're looking for the Broadcom, which is the Ethernet controller down here. It's a 5752 gigabit Ethernet, and it's actually PCI Express 1X would be my guess. Um, but it's built in, so it's just by running off the PCI Express channel. And it is a 14E4-1600, so that's where we needed to go specifically because the other texts did not have that device ID in there so once you find make sure that that's what's on your board or whatever you need is on your board you can close out of that and then you would install this one the BCM 5751 Ethernet Kex that's modified for the 1600 14 E 1600 to be specific and I'm getting a little bit of a ghost with my mouse I don't understand why but that's alright, it's not a big deal because it just disappears after a few moments and so you'll unzip that and you will have this text right here uh, the Apple BCM 5751 blah 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 at which point you will be in OS X86 tools again and you will choose install texts and it'll say please follow, you hit OK in this case I'm already in the folder I need to be in so I'll choose that and I'll hit choose It'll ask where I want to put it, which is Leopard, and then it'll ask for me to install it, and then it'll ask for the password. I'm not going to reinstall it because, once again, it's already working for me, so I don't want to screw it up. So it'll install, and then it'll say, uh, cross your fingers and reboot, at which point you'll reboot the computer again. Now, when I did this on my install, it didn't right away recognize the, uh, the card. I don't know why, because I went back into my network here and there was nothing in it. It was just empty. But then that's that's when I installed the tools on this go around. Was I installed the tools after I already installed the network driver and as soon as the tools installed for the uh, to actually see what's on the, the system suddenly I got a notification telling me that the uh, computer had found a new network Ethernet controller and the computer's already rebooting at that point so I couldn't do much about it. Then when the computer reset it was here and it was working and it's been working ever since so if it doesn't initially work for you check out the tool or maybe wait to install the tool till after that so that way it'll actually properly read your board I, I don't really understand why it happened that way but that's the way it worked for me and now everything works just fine 
Um, so, and then after that, that's, uh, and now remember, this is 10.5.7, so that'll work. Now, for me, when I was trying to install things uh, from the internet, uh, when they were downloading DMGs, I would get a kernel panic. That is, and it would say something to do with the seatbelt. It was about uh, right here on the screen for me, uh, saying the seatbelt wasn't working right. This is where you're going to want to go to Insanely Mac. Um, and thank you, uh, by the way, to everybody at Insanely Mac and the OSX86 Wiki and all the developers that have done all this. You guys are incredible. Uh, you've made this significantly easier uh, than it would be if I was doing it completely on my own. And when you go to Insanely Mac, you're going to want to go to a sticky that they've got there called Updating DMG Mounting Issue and Seatbelt. This is where you're going to find out what kernel you're using. Now, you should already know that it's 9... Point seven. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Five point seven. If I could talk. No. Nine point seven today. Yes. Ten five seven with nine point seven. So that's what we installed with. So you'll want to download this seat belt right here. It's going to have just another kex inside the zip. You open the zip. You extract the kex. You install it the same way with OS X eighty six tools. And then you reboot the computer. And then poof, everything works. And then when I did the update, uh, which I did through the actual software update. Uh, it gave me the other options. I installed all the other updates first, then I installed the system update. The system update installed just fine, it just would not reboot at that point because it overwrote the kernel. So I booted back up with my drive uh, and reinstalled just the kernel. I unchecked everything else and installed just the kernel. And that didn't work quite either. It did start to boot at that point, but then it wouldn't. So I went back in again and installed Chameleon again. Uh, and. I think I may have even reinstalled the kernel again, but basically, so you might try those two at the same time. I don't quite remember what I did. I was pretty tired at that point, but that's basically the gist of what I did. And then when I reset, everything worked, and I was running 10.5.8, which, like I say, is right here, 10.5.8. Or you can use the uh, version 1.6 installer CD, which has 10.5.8 already on it. I'm pretty sure most of the options will be most of the same. I haven't actually run through that disk. I just finished downloading it when I found out that the computer was working, so... I haven't actually run off of it yet, but uh, I downloaded the light version, which is a bit smaller since it doesn't have the extra stuff in there for like some ATI cards and stuff like that. Um, so you may want to download the full version if you're not running on a stock system or this one specifically. This is again a, a, a HP uh, DC7600 Ultra Slim, uh, and it's all Intel. Uh, SATA controllers, Intel 950 GMA a graphics controller, and it's a Broadcom Ethernet, uh, but yeah, pretty much everything else is Intel, which is awesome right out the box for this, and the Intel HD audio. And then, uh, see, I've got another update to install, but uh, then yeah, so then after that I have installed my update since then, installed software. I did, just for safekeeping after everything rebooted, I did reinstall the 1057 seatbelt because I didn't update the kernel when I updated the, the operating system. I kept the same kernel. So I left all that the same and just reinstalled the seatbelt just for safe measures in case it did update the actual seatbelt kex just from the update itself. And I can install or I can download and mount DMG files from the internet, no problem, no kernel panic thus far. And that's how I got my system working. Um, this is really pretty much the most optimal system that's from a manufacturer that I've seen so far. And because, uh, like I say, it's it's all Intel mostly, so pretty much most of it worked right out of the box. Uh, it did take a lot of fiddling, like say over the last week, to actually get it working, but that was just mostly fine-tuning it, getting the graphics and the Ethernet to work. Everything else did work. And once I found those specific texts, uh, it was golden after that. Alright, um, so yeah, that's uh, my how-to on how I did things here. Um, like I say, it's all working pretty much 100% at this point. It's, like I say, it's really fast, especially since it's a single core processor. I haven't, you know, done anything like burning disks or anything like that because this doesn't have a burner in it. It's just got a, uh, a multi-bay device that HP uses, uh, so it's uh, a DVD drive, which actually I was really lucky because out of all the ones I got, I got a bunch of them there. That was the only one with a DVD drive in it. All the rest are just regular CD-ROMs, um, so that was an interesting problem. But uh, past that... Installation was extremely simple. I did go through a bunch of different distributions just because I was trying to get the audio, or excuse me, not the audio, but the video and the um, 
uh, uh, network card to actually work properly. But, um, yeah, after that, I mean, these are all the different distributions I've got, plus the one inside the uh, actual computer there. IATCOS uh, 1055, that worked really well, minus the audio, or excuse me, wow, uh, minus the video in the network. Um, this is the Identeb 1058, I assume it works. Um, IATCOS Snow Leopard, I've been fiddling around with that. I've been trying installing it just by itself, not without the uh, without the Leopard base, which I've heard you want to do, so that's a new adventure. Um, this is another version of Snow Leopard, I don't remember which. And I didn't have 1055, that worked as well. Once again, no video, no network. And Leo for all 1052 and Caliway 1052. Both of those worked as well. The Caliway actually, or I'm sorry, no, the Leo for all actually gave me my video, which is what really annoyed me. The video did work, um, but it didn't have any audio, which is fixable just with installation of Cax Slater. But um, that's what told me that my system does actually work with this. But I. Uh, Finally figured it out, so I'll be posting links. I'll probably up the, upload these files to Mediafire. Um, but yeah, any, any one of these distributions uh, should work. And I've heard that the texts I've been using do work in Snow Leopard. Now, one thing, uh, Snow Leopard being a 64-bit operating system, uh, they or it only works specific drivers or texts only work in 32-bit mode. So you have to boot it or run you install. You have to use the 32-bit option checked. Uh, just so that way it boots in a 32-bit mode. Uh, I've, I've heard Apple sh may should be releasing a GMA 950 uh, driver update uh, for the 64-bit. I don't know if Apple's doing it or if it's just someone from the uh, Hackintosh community, but basically somebody at some point uh, should be uploading this. So we should be uh, ready to roll there. Um, so yeah, uh, that's how I did it with my system. I do ask that you don't ask specifically if, if computer specs of yours are going to work because I don't know. Um, the best way to find out is to go to Insanely Mac and the OS X86 wiki uh, to check out if your hardware works or not and how easy it is to use. I would assume it's probably going to work, especially with something like Leopard because Leopard has been around for so long. It's got a huge support base. But I mean, if you have general questions, I can try and help you out as much as I can. But uh, you know, I was pretty lucky with this setup because it mostly works there. But the big thing is, is using those tools that I showed you on there and that will show you what hardware is in your computer so that way you can find the specific drivers you need because sometimes searching the device ID is what you need to do that's how I got my uh, graphics to work properly and the uh, Broadcom card so once I did all that it started working beautifully and that's how I did it there so like I say any questions you know I can help you as much as I can but for specific hardware questions I really don't know especially with AMD I got AMD to work once uh, with my older systems I did not have working graphics properly. Uh, they worked, but they weren't accelerated, and you know they were just stuck at that regular resolution. But it, and it was a, an NVIDIA graphics card, not an ATI card at that point. But this was also back in the day of 1052 using this uh, Leo for all disk. But um, so yeah, any anything else I can help you with? Like I say, drop me a line. I'll see what I can do. But uh, that's what I've got from there. So thank you.